Hey, what's up guys? Thank you so much for watching my video. This is Ants Canada and you are watching the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Now today is a super, super special video, one that I'm excited about because today I wanted to show you guys for the very first time the new line of Formicaria that are coming out this year that uh, we've been working on. So let's get to it. Introducing to you guys our brand new line of Formicaria that we are calling the Hybrid Nest. It's the Hybrid Nest series. It's the first nest of a variety of Formicaria that we are hoping to release. Right now, what you're looking at is one of our beta prototypes. All right, so after lots and lots of research and doing our homework, we have come up with this, our brand new Hybrid Nests. Now, I should start by mentioning that my business partner and I have decided to file a patent for this design just because we really, really believe in it and we feel like it will essentially revolutionize how we keep ants today. Now this nest here is a size small. It's uh, four inches by four inches, but it does hold a lot of ants. Now I teamed up with fellow passionate ant keeper, Brian Barnett, all the way from Salt Lake City, USA, and together we founded this hybrid nest series. Now one of the things that we found about the available formicariums out there was that there was really a lack of formicariums that were geared towards keeping the various species of ants. I mean, you have thousands and thousands of different ants, each with different needs, and having to create a formicarium that would cater to them all was a little bit of a challenge. So, we wanted to make this hybrid nest series very, very versatile and customizable depending on what kind of ant you have. So, we decided to come up with a genus-specific formicarium. A formicarium that was designed to cater to specific genera. Now let's look here at our label here. You'll see the hybrid nest, Ants Canada there. It says here hybrid nest LA4. So this here is our laceous specific formicarium. Now the top has a cover just so you could keep the formicarium nice and dark. No need now to deal with cardboard or whatever you, you used to use to cover your formicariums. You've got a perfectly functional cover right here. So let's remove that cover now and let's take a look at the inside of this formicarium. If you look at this formicarium here, you'll see that it's got a varied topography there. Um, and I'll go into explanation later on as to what that's all about. Now, in terms of the design, what we did for this line of Formicaria is we actually studied photographs of nests of specific ants. So we gathered a lot of photos from online of Laceous colony nests. And for them, we found that a lot of their nests were very rounded. The chambers were composed of very rounded um, rooms and very curved sort of rounded corridors. The thing too about this laceous nest is everything's really small. I wouldn't recommend this nest, for example, for a Camponotus because, well, I don't think a queen would be able to fit in here, but it is the perfect size for your typical laceous colony. Now, a colony of laceous can really fit in here. This holds a lot of ants, even though the formicarium is only four by four, because of the nature of the nest, it really does hold a lot of ants. Like if you take a look at this room here and that room there, that is about one inch deep. So that's a lot of space there. See that? Pretty neat, no? Um, okay, and let's take a look at some of the formicarium features here of this laceous version. What makes this hybrid nest really, really cool is that this opening here, if you look at that, is the perfect size for our tubing, which we use for our other formicaria, which is about one centimeter, but it's also the perfect size for the test tubes, which will also come with the kit. We're thinking of including it with the kit. So now if you have a test tube colony that you've raised, you've caught a queen during nuptial flight and you've raised her to her first few nanitics and you're ready to move her into the formicarium, now you don't need a tube at all. You could just fit that into that opening and just leave it there and you know allow the queen 
and her colony to move into the formicarium, into the hybrid nest. Now, let's look at hydration. Of course, this is the biggest issue of a formicarium, in my opinion. Now, if you take a look at the bottom, we have a stainless steel mesh, which is attached to the bottom. There, you see. Um, and I'll put this aside for now. Now, if you look at the base, we have here an area for water. Now, the way the hybrid nest works is you can use any kind of hydration medium that you are comfortable with and that you know your ants might like. So if you're a fan of Waitong aerated autoclave cement, well then you just place your AAC into the slot and then place your formicarium right on top. And the mesh lays right against the hydration medium there. Other media you could use are Plaster of Paris. Let's say you're a fan of using Plaster of Paris. All you do is fill this section here with Plaster of Paris, let it dry overnight, and then place this directly on top. Very, very easy. If you're a fan of using perlite or grout with crushed perlite, you can also use that. For those of you who are fans of using soil and dirt, you can fill this area here with soil and dirt and then place that there. And all of that, of course, is replaceable because you could just lift that and change this bottom. So if this gets moldy, easy. You just remove this and replace it. Very, very cool. See? So now you don't have to worry about keeping your colony hydrated because you've got whatever hydration medium you want to use. You can even put cotton there. For those of you that raise your colonies in test tube setups using wet cotton, well, you could continue to raise them on cotton. So it's um, your medium doesn't have to be expensive, whatever you choose to hydrate your colony. Now to hydrate the medium, there are these tubs here on the sides, you see there? And the tubs have small openings if you look there, really tiny openings which seep into your hydration medium inside. And it keeps your colony nice and hydrated. And of course, when you're not looking at your colony anymore, you place your top to cover them. Really neat, no guys? Very simple too. It's um, easy to use and you've got an opening here and as well an opening here. Um, this piece here is actually removable. Um, we m might possibly decide to come up with um, different openings in the future. Now you might be asking yourself, what are these holes here? Well, for those of you that like to heat your colony with heating cables, you can place your heating cable into those holes. They fit perfectly for your standard um, commercial reptile heating cable right through it goes right all the way to the other end and of course you don't want to heat the whole colony you just want to heat one section so you would place the heating cable into there and have it exit the other end and it can keep that one side um, or that one section of the formicarium nice and warm see that pretty cool right i love it now we also wanted to make a nest that was very accessible to the average ad keeper. So this also happens to be our most affordable nest um, of all the formicariums that we've ever sold. Um, in terms of what the exact price is, uh, that information will be released soon. Uh, but I think you guys will be happy uh, to know how much this will be going for uh, this little piece of high-tech ant technology. Now the advantage of having a genus specific nest is that we can control how much hydration the colony gets. Now we found that Laceus tend to like moderately moist nests. So when designing the Laceus specific formicarium hybrid nest here, we made sure to have at least 45 to 50% of the formicarium touching the hydration medium. So now you don't have to worry, like, am I watering the colony enough? Well, if, you just, if you're keeping the formicarium properly hydrated, now you know that uh, you have the hydration correct. The formicarium is geared towards creating a specific humidity and a specific environment. 
Now I know you guys are itching to see some of the other designs. Well, here we go. Now let's take a look at the Formica hybrid nest. Here's the Formica hybrid nest, the same specs as the Lacius, but the inside is different, of course. See that? Now we're not claiming that they're exactly like the species belonging to that genus, but the designs are definitely genus inspired. Now we were looking at Formica nests. We found that their nests were also composed of circular, very round chambers connected by thin corridors. So this here is the Formica. You see that? So for those of you with Formica fusca or, you know, Formica subsurisia, this in here is your nest for them. I really, really love it. I love this huge chamber here. You can just imagine how many pupae and brood they can fit into that room. And that, of course, is also moderately moist in humidity level, so about 45 to 50% of that is comes in contact with the hydration medium. Oh, another hydration medium that's becoming popular more and more now is, you know those gel hydration balls that's used to give water to crickets and some are using it for plants now? Um, they're starting to become widely available. I know some ant keepers who are using that as a hydration medium. So you, in that case, you would put the hydration gel balls inside that your well, your hydration well there. All right, next. A very, very popular genus in the world of ant keeping. This here is the hybrid nest that is catered to Camponotus. Now for Camponotus, we found their nests were composed of very horizontal bars. You see that? Really kind of horizontal pill-shaped um, nests in wood, of course. Uh, and so we tried to mimic that for this hybrid nest. You'll see there's a lot of horizontal bars. The nest is very left to right inclined. And if you look here, you'll see that the chambers and the tunnels are just about the perfect size to accommodate a fat queen, Camponotus queen. You see there? Now we found Camponotus prefer nests that are moderately moist to dry nests. So if you look here, you can see that a smaller percentage of the nest is actually in contact with your hydration medium. I can't wait to put a Camponotus in here. For those of you who have Camponotus colonies, I really highly recommend this hybrid nest. Moving on, we have here our Pogonomermex specific hybrid nest. This is our Pogonomermex version here, you see? So for those of you who have Pogonomermex or Messer or any of those other harvesting ants, we now have a formicarium for you. Now, we found that Harvester and Pogonomermex colonies excavate a really vertical nest with chambers that are positioned around a main vertical tunnel. Um, and so, for of, of course, we couldn't mimic that with this nest because for now, these hybrid nests are flat-lying. But we did mimic the orientation of the chambers attached to a main line. So if you look here, you'll see we have major large chambers here and some chambers that are rather superficial here, you'll see, for areas that they need to keep nice and dry. Like let's say your ants want to store some of the seeds, they'll be storing it perhaps here in those areas that are above other sections of the nest that are in contact with your hydration medium. So there you go, that is our harvester ant version, our Pogonomer Mex. Place the cover there. Now, of course, we wanted to make this nest modular, so with a tube, you attach that area to a second one you see there? You attach it that way. And then you use pegs like these, which we'll also make available, to attach them together. So you can actually have a long line of formicaria all attached together like that. Really awesome, no? And another reminder is that even though you might have an ant that doesn't fall under this genus, you can still 
use the formicarium just as long as the tunnels are the appropriate size for the species that you have. So like let's say you have a Campanotus colony. Well, you can't use the Laceus nest because, well, the tunnels aren't big enough to accommodate your queens. So what we'll do is we'll have on the ordering page the info of each formicarium and we'll also display its specific stats. We'll also display how much hydration each formicarium, each hybrid nest version offers, along with a list of possible species that you can keep in each version of the hybrid nest. We'll also include average tunnel size, average chamber size, just so it's not confusing for you guys and you don't have to guess which version of the hybrid nest you need. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always send me an email. Now these are just for Laceus, Formica, Camponotus, and Pogonomermex, but we are also working on a Solenopsis specific nest, a Tetramorium specific nest, and we are over time going to come out with more and more genus specific nests um, within this hybrid nest series, just so you guys can have ants that are extra happy. So thanks guys so much for watching this video. This product should be available on our website soon. We want to release it preferably by the spring. You know, I know a lot of you guys are starting to catch queens now. Um, for those of you from temperate regions in the northern hemisphere, um, and for those in the southern hemisphere in Australia, you're coming to the end soon um, of your anting season. So these will be available very, very soon. Um, these are just beta versions for now. The actual product that will be releasing may be different, maybe slightly different, it might have some changes, but this here is pretty much the essence of our hybrid nests, which we are super, super proud of. And we hope you guys will give it a chance. You know, Ants Canada, we've always prided ourselves in innovating the ant keeping hobby, and we feel like these nests will truly, truly improve the quality of ant keeping and make it a lot easier, especially for those who are venturing into the hobby. So there you go guys, thanks so much for watching my video and I look forward to you owning one of our brand new hybrid nests. Take care, bye bye. Hey what's up guys, you know the deal. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also check out some of our other videos on this channel. We've got a video called Why Ants, a message for the parents, particularly for you kids who might be having a hard time convincing your mom and dad to allow you to keep pet ants. We also have a video called the top 10 biggest ant keeping mistakes. Be sure to do it right the first time. Send love forever. Bye guys.